Namaskaram, myself Shobha Srinivasan and my students at Aksharam Abhyasam Anandam are very delighted and very grateful to be presenting this lecture demonstration on evolution of Carnatic music for RMT Samskriti's concert series. Thank you so much RMT Samskriti for giving us this opportunity. How do we see music? Some see music as a tool for entertainment, as a tool to bond, as a tool to heal, for learning and excelling, for showcasing our brilliance, for practicing bhakti and for connecting to our inner self, understanding life and through that understanding others and the divinity in life itself. Why do we want to learn about evolution of Carnatic music? I feel there are three essential reasons. One is to appreciate what has been given to us, how it has been given to us. When we know the lineage, then we know what all has gone through for Carnatic music or any form of music to come to us. And then we want to elevate ourselves to be able to receive that with gratitude and also feel responsible for passing it on to future generations. Music, Indian music dates back to Vedic period, the period of 2500 BCE to 500 BCE, some say 1500 to 500. Nonetheless, it started with Sama Veda, the third part of the Veda. And it is said that those um, slokas from Rig Veda were incorporated into Sama Veda that were attuned for music, that were, uh, that people were able to sing. So, we will just listen to Sama Veda right now, a portion of it and see how it connects to music. see uh, we can figure out the swaras rima garisa rima garisa sanisa sari garisa so from vedic period onwards the swarasthanas were established the placement of the swaras were established and also it is said that the instruments veena and mridangam were also played during that period so then we go on to the next period which is 500 BCE to 500 CE where musical treaties were written. Uh, foremost amongst them was Bharata Muni's uh, Natya Shastra. Even though it is called Natya Shastra, it, uh, it encompassed all the theatre elements, dance elements and music. All, all of them were encompassed and the idea of rasa, how to invoke mood with music and dance were also discussed. And then uh, another treatise, Dattilam by Dattila was totally dedicated to music, which talked about Pada, Swara, Tala, Shruti, Vadi, Samadhi, Vivadi, Murchana, Jati, which till date we use these terms. So that was that period. And then came the period of 
400 to 1200 CE where uh, Brihad Deshi was uh, written by Matanga Muni and uh, for the first time the concept of Raga, <coughs> what Raga means was introduced and also it, uh, it paved the way to emergence of classical music. And during that time, we also see Sri uh, Jaideva Goswami composing Geeta Govindam. Geeta Govindam uh, is the most celebrated Raga Kavya and it, it uh, talks about the sublime Sringara Maha uh, emotions between Radha, Krishna and Gopikas. And it was an inspiration for or model for creation of dance dramas on parallel themes in different parts of the country in different languages. So let us listen to this Gita Govindam, this uh, Ashtapadi. <laughs> also influenced Indian music and Sufism got introduced. We will listen to Amir Khusro's Cha Puti Lak Sab Chhinire Muse Naina Milai Ke. It's a beautiful song. Sufism is all about spirituality and we can see the alignment or the uh, commonality between all kinds of music. So here it is. सब छीनीरे मोसे नैना मिलाई के छाप तिलक सब छीनीरे मोसे नैना 
also come to the next period of bhakti movement which is from 600 to 1400 ce where we see goswami tulasidas composing shri ramcharit manas and bhakta meera singing meera bhajans in full devotion to lord krishna and we see the first glimpse of the music therapy aspect here where meera was given poison but it didn't affect her because she was completely immersed in the love for krishna pag ghungaru bandh pag ghungaru bandh pag ghungaru bandh pag ghungaru bandh mera nachi re naachire meera naachire naachire pag ghungaru bandh pag ghungaru bandh pag ghungaru bandh pag ghungaru bandh meera naachire naachire meera मैं तो मेरे नारायण की आप ही हो गई दासी मैं तो मेरे नारायण की आप ही हो गई दासी लोग कहे मेरा भई भारी लोग कहे मेरा भई भारी नाथ कहे कुल नासी पग घुंगरु बांध पग घुंगरु बांध पग घुंगरु बांध पग घुंगरु बांध मेरा नाचीरे नाचीरे मेरा नाचीरे नाचीरे विष का प्याला राणा जी भेजा पीवत मीरासी विष का प्याला राणा जी भेजा पीवत मीरासी रे मीरा के प्रभु गिरधर नागर मीरा के प्रभु गिरधर नागर सुहद मिले अविनाशी रे पग घुंगरु बांध पग घुंगरु बांध पग घुंगरु बांध पग घुंगरु बांध मीरा नाचीरे नाचीरे मीरा नाचीरे नाचीरे मीरा नाचीरे नाचीरे The next period was 1100 to 1500 CE where we started seeing classism in music emerge uh, and also the bifurcation between north indian style and south indian the hindustani and the carnatic music emerge on the andhra side we have shri talapaka annamacharya composing 
so many kirtanas in devotion of Lord Venkateshwara primarily and then in the Karnataka side we have our Sangeeta Pitamaha Sri Purandara Dasa composing Dasa Kritis uh, Kirtanas in uh, the praise of Lord Krishna and we will listen to each of these uh, Kirtanas. Kirtanas for daily offerings loaded with bhakti and life lessons.
Then came the period between 1500 and 1700 CE where Ramamatya Swaramela Kalanithi and Venkatamakhi's Chaturdanda Prakashika were written elaborating the Janaka Janya uh, relationship between parent and child ragams which was very essential to understand the raga swarupam and how certain characteristics are derived from the parent to the child and how different can a child be from the parent both. So and then during that period also we saw Ramadasu uh, singing and again in bhakti uh, composing so many kirtanas on Lord Rama primarily. Then came the Trinity period where we have our Sangeeta Karnatic music trinities Sri Muthuswami Dikshidar, Saint Tyagaraja and Sri Syama Shastri giving us the treasure of Carnatic music. In Carnatic music learning, it is said that the Manodharma part can be developed by listening to these Krutis and the Ragas and the way the com the, they have composed it, that itself gives rise to the creativity within us. Muthuswami Dikshitar was also trained in Hindustani classical music and also his compositions were influenced uh, by Western uh, music in notice for us. His Navagraha Kritis and Navavarna Kritis are rendered in concerts as main piece and they are they are for advanced learners. Oh. 
Saint Tyagaraja, his compositions are full of bhakti and it ranges from the least complex to the most complex composition and it is uh, for the beginners, his Utsava Sampradaya and Divi Nama Kirtanas are very easy to learn and can start learning and as we advanced in our learning, we can also get to learn his most complex kritis. His Pancharatna kritis are uh, five gems which are even sung today by the uh, most eminent artists coming together in Atirva Yaru to sing them. And the Nauka Charitram is a dance drama.
Shama Shastri, composed in over 800 ragas, characterized by beautiful melodies, intricate rhythms, deep understanding of human voice, and his Swarajatis are sung as main concert items in uh, three hour or more uh, kacheris. We would like to conclude our presentation with a simple contemplative thought. What does learning music mean to you? And how do you want to see your journey with music? Thank you so much once again RMT Samskriti for giving us this opportunity. Thank you.